run down sixteen hundred dollars or any advance at sixteen hundred. On December 17th, Swan Galleries is conducting our annual auction of rare and important Art Nouveau posters. And this year, we're really off the charts as to the rarity and the importance of the posters that we're offering. The sale is built around a private, exquisite collection of masterworks by Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec and Alphonse Mucha. The collection at the heart of this auction was assembled over the course of 30 years by a discriminating couple who sought to find the best examples, condition-wise, of posters that they considered to be important and an integral part of the Art Nouveau era. So over the course of 30 years, they amassed 11 posters by Toulouse-Lautrec and seven posters by Mucha, each one of which, in its own right, is in as good condition as they could possibly find, scouring as they did throughout the collections of the world. And a lot of people have already asked me, why has this couple at this point decided to sell their collection? The answer is a very practical one. Uh, after living in the Northeast for so long, the couple decided to retire to Hawaii. The tropical climate of Hawaii really is not conducive to collecting paper. The humidity, the warm air, the salt air, all have a lot of reasons against bringing a fine collection of works on paper to that tropical paradise. What's so impressive to me as the head of the poster department and should be impressive to those of you who come in to view this collection is here in a single auction, you have the possibility to acquire what it took this couple 30 years to put together. Works of this magnitude, works in this condition, seldom if ever appear on the market one by one. And to have 18 posters at the same time in the same auction in such good condition really is a once in a lifetime opportunity for many other collectors. There really is no other place to start when describing this auction or when describing the history of posters in general than with what we have as lot 132, Lautrec's masterpiece, The Moulin Rouge. Designed in 1891, this was Lautrec's first foray into lithography and his first poster. Now let's try to put that into context. Lautrec was an accomplished artist by 1891. He was a painter, he was a sketcher, but he had never tried his hand at lithography, nor had he tried his hand at commercial art, such as designing a poster. And here, in one fell swoop, he not only designed his first poster, he not only designed his first lithograph, but he created a poster of such importance that it would become a cornerstone. It would become the cornerstone for the world of posters ever onwards. The most famous nightclub in turn of the century Paris, the Moulin Rouge, so famous, so much already a part of the international mindset and the international concept of Montmartre, of the gay 90s in Paris, a nightclub so famous, it's already been the subject of two incredible feature films. First in 1952 with John Huston's Moulin Rouge. Then in 2001 with Baz Luhrmann's film of the same title, Moulin Rouge. The name itself conjures up such a medley of extravagance and dancing girls and over-the-top hedonism. That the Moulin Rouge was a sexual experience was obvious even when we see John Huston's 1952 film when he films the dancers in the club recreating the can-can, it's very clear that the dancers' petticoats and the men's reaction to seeing women flash their underwear is the very essence, the very nature of what this club is about. And Lautrec, in his poster, manages to capture all of the excitement, all of the movement, all of the novelty, and let's face it, all of the sexuality that the nightclub represented. The center of the poster is in fact La Goulou, the dancer, an American dancer named Louise Weber, performing under the name La Goulou, which itself means the glutton. The poster features her petticoats as she kicks her legs up in one of the famous can-can dances that helped immortalize the establishment. All we see is the whiteness of her paper that Lautrec brilliantly leaves blank and leaves it to your imagination to think about what you'd be viewing if you came to see what at the time was such a scandalous dance. 
The man featured in the forefront of the poster is not just another casual observer to this scandalous dance. It is, in fact, La Goulou's dancing partner, a gentleman of the name of Valentin de Saucé. That was actually his stage name. It means the boneless. And as we see here, he is half shocked and holding his hand to his mouth, but his other hand is actually pointing towards the nether regions of the dancer in question. This poster is so large that it was originally printed in three sheets. The bottom two sheets contain the image of the poster, and the third top sheet, which is the smallest of the three sheets, containing only the lettering for the Moulin Rouge. This is the rare third banner, and many versions of this poster don't have that third banner, and sometimes you will see this poster for sale with just the two banners. With the addition of this original third banner, it adds tremendous value and tremendous import to this already incredibly rare and important image. In researching this poster, which is basically a book and an essay in and of itself, one fact came up which I was unable to ascertain the meaning of, and I'm hoping someone during the course of this exhibition might have some insight to help me solve what appears to be a small riddle. In addition to having the original top banner, this poster also bears two rubber ink stamps, little star-like stamps that say Moulin Rouge. They can be seen in the yellow lights to the left of La Goulou. Some versions of this poster that have appeared on the market in the past have had these Moulin Rouge stamps. Others have not. Other Moulin Rouge posters, different images by different artists, have had these ink Moulin Rouge stamps on them. Others have not. And I've asked several world experts if they could help me figure out what in fact these rubber stamps meant, and no one was really sure. And it seems to me that these were stamps that when the poster was printed, some of the posters went to local print dealers to be sold, others went to the Moulin Rouge to be hung as advertisements, and I think as they passed through the hallowed halls of this famous music hall, they were stamped in-house with the Moulin Rouge stamp and then hung up on the walls of Paris. This is just conjecture at this point, and I would hope that someone with a better idea of the exact history of these stamps would be able to fill me in on all the details. The poster comes from Lautrec's estate itself. From there, it went on to the estate of Maurice Joyant, who is an art dealer and a lifelong friend of Toulouse Lautrec's. And from Joyant's heirs to the present owners, the poster really is a masterpiece with impeccable provenance. Among the other highlights of works by Toulouse the Trek that we're offering in this auction is lot number 133. This is the Salon de Sant from 1896. This, as well as several other of the Lautrecs being offered in this auction, are exceptional because of their incredibly fine condition. What do I mean by incredibly fine condition? I mean condition as fine as the day they were printed. And if this is hard for people to believe, several of the Lautrecs that we have in the auction have not been mounted onto linen. That means they're in their original paper state. That means you, as the viewer, you, as the curator, you, as the poster aficionado, can actually see the poster as it was the day it came off the press. This poster from 1896 features a beautiful woman reclining on the deck of a ship. The image was used to advertise an exhibition of posters at Paris's famed Salon de Sant, but the genesis of the image was a boat trip that Toulouse-Lautrec took on his way to visit his mother one summer. On this boat, he encountered a woman. She may not even have known he was on the boat, but Lautrec completely fell in love with her, stayed on the boat longer than he intended to a different city in order to be with this woman. At some point along the way, a photograph was taken of her, and when he finally disembarked from the boat, he used the photograph to design this poster. It's just a wonderful image using the diagonal of her chair, using flat images of color. A lot of Lautrec's signature design elements are visible here. The image is so famous it transcends its title. Yes, we see it's called Salon de Sant, but among the cognoscenti, among the Lautrec fans, among the scholars, this poster is familiarly referred to as Promenade en Yacht, or the passenger of cabin 54. It tells us that the story and the inspiration transcends the simple image itself.